Yeah, we're starting to get people in. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Evening. <laughs> Excuse evening. me. Welcome. Yeah, they'll that's, that's stream in. I have to say, Peter, your workshop looks like a combat flyers workshop as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't my workshop. No, no I wouldn't I just... dare show you my no. workshop. <laughs> <laughs> No way. Hey, right. yeah, Gary from Colchester. We, um, right, let's see who we've got furthest to field this evening. See who wins the prize. And the prize is to ask the first question. Yeah. So Colchester's winning it at the moment. We must do a bit better than that. Norfolk, dark, darkest and deepest Norfolk. Oh, great. Oh, Mr. V, you should be uh, you should get on with work. Ashby de la Zouche in Leicestershire. I'd be surprised, Peter, if you don't get someone from North America. You know, I'd be pretty surprised at that. If yeah. That didn't happen. I've, I've, had, I've had one of my mates actually from America contact me, asking me if we if we if he can watch it. He's actually work. I had to work now at the moment, but uh, asking if he can watch it. I said it. Yeah, they can. It'll be shared again on on YouTube, won't it? I think we've got Motherwell winning at the moment. Oh, um, Al yeah. Alan Bunker. Yeah, Brighton in the opposite direction. Yeah, Joe. Alan. Joe's the closest. He's next door. <laughs> <laughs> and your camera bow is rather good because it just crops your nose. It's a bit what nose. Oh, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> is that any better? That's, For some reason. that's perfect. Some reason tonight I'm not getting the other um, standard. Oh yeah, there we go. That's got it. It's probably because I'm Andy's left me in charge this evening, so oh, right. we're um, you know winging a prayer. Yeah. Okay. Somebody from India. Well, India. There we go. Anand. Well, there we go. He must he win. He can ask the first question this evening. Then, if you put a question forward, we'll give you the first option there. Yeah. I'll give it a couple more minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll kick off. Just welcome everybody to a well. In the UK, it's wet and horrible. A little bit cold now. Awful, yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, not brilliant. No. Anyway. Um, just sort of, just sort of reiterate what we've we've told you many, many times before. Um, if you would like to ask some questions, there is a Q and A box. By all means, put some uh, quips and some uh, some comments in the chat. But Q questions really in the Q and A, and then we'll either answer those by typing them or we'll get them live to the guys this evening. Um, it works quite quite smoothly that way. Um, any questions? Just raise your hand. We've got one up at the moment. So let's find out. Ralph, Ralph has got his hand up. Are you waving at us or just you have a question, Ralph? If you've got a question, put it in the chat or in the ah. in the QA and and we'll we'll try and answer it. Uh, Denmark's okay. winning. Denmark. Yeah. We've still got India winning, so Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, India's still winning. So um yeah, I think that we'll call that the the end of the um geography lesson shall we say yeah. and uh what i'd like to do is just to welcome everybody this evening and uh and also our panelists we've got peter tim and john and uh and then you've got barry and myself who'll be uh trying to listen in ask a few questions and and possibly answer a, a couple of questions as well um vintage combat is the is the topic of this evening's um session um all i can say is that it was a, an awful long time ago the last time i held a handle and spun around in circles and um it didn't end too prettily with a mini good year but uh, that was probably vintage then because that was a good 40 years ago so um you know we'll we'll have to see but without further ado i think i'll hand over to peter first i think peter's got control and yeah. um yeah. yeah thank, thank thank you and I'll, I'll press on yeah i don't, just to give you an outline of where i'm coming from this evening is that i i originally well i've modeling has been a big part of my life most of my life 
and um, most of it has been within the pylon racing circle. But over the years, I've watched that the British Nationals been watching control line combat with with a lot of curiosity and interest. And I always thought that one day, you know, I'll, when I'll retire from pylon racing, I'll give it a go. Well, I met John, John Leggett, who's one of our panelists, and, and Tim. And Tim supplied me with some equipment. And I've uh, entered the theatre of combat. And it is a theatre of combat. The dramas that go on are unbelievable. There cannot be another activity in aero modeling that offers what combat does. The, the models are fairly easy to build. The flying is extremely difficult to get very good. Quite easy to be pretty poor, as I'm <laughs> demonstrating. But, you know, we're giving it a go. And with, with the help of the other guys, I'm, I'm slowly getting there. Um, so I just wanted to pass on a few of my experiences over the last four years. And it's almost four years to the day that I started. So, um, uh, how do ah yeah so there's a there's a yeah that's a little bit there's, who are the people that we've I've come across and, and that are, are currently flying there's well there's, there's guys there of all ages there's, there's lads in their twenties yeah they're young, young and fit and and there's guys in in their in their eighties eighty one that's actually won a, winning a competition John John is uh, not is 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 a good age, shall we say? <laughs> and, and even John, <laughs> John, John is, uh, John's still winning competitions. Um, Tim's quite a lot younger. Tim's not far, he's about the same age as me. So <laughs> age is not is is ir is irrelevant with this. The the big thing is is practice and experience. Um, we'll come on to that in a, in a little in a little bit. There's also is not a male or fully orientated um, activity either or sport. There are there are females um, um, competing in it, and some of them are pretty good. Um, there's two or three young lasses in this country, although they haven't, I haven't we haven't seen them since the Barkston Heath Nationals that, that are doing it. And yeah, they they do a good good job. Um, health and fitness. It is one of the topics that really has surprised me with this, because to be quite fair, a few of the quite a few of the aero modelers that I know are not particularly very fit. Now, I, I came into this not, not not particularly fit, and within the, the last four years, I've lost weight. I've been far fitter than what I was four years ago. And if you look around the the field at the people, the other people that are doing it, you know the the general health and well being of the the people doing it is pretty good, which you don't you wouldn't you'd be surprised, wouldn't you, really, to in to see that in in aero modelling? But it, it is there. That we had a bit of a discussion about it at the last meeting, and a lot of the other guys sort of seem to agree with me on on that as well. Um, the, the next thing is that I've got next topic I've got on here is the the prof, work, um, walks of life and the professions that people do generally as Barry uh, confirming in pylon racing most of the guys there will are uh, from an engineering type of background and you because you're probably spending about eighty percent of your time developing and working on your equipment. And about 20% of it actually flying. Combat is the complete opposite. You're probably 20% um, developing your equipment and working on it, and 80% flying. It is all, it's all about getting out there and flying. So consequently, within combat, you find you've got people, teachers, there's guys there, business owners, there's, there's even a couple of musicians there um in it and some very very talented people and that every one of them that i've met have been really good people really nice people there's oh, they supported me and, and helped me and i've made some right for messes 
in in uh, in well, this year this year probably I've probably had about half a dozen flights that have been fairly decent. And that that's in four years. So and they've all been very supportive and helped. And John and Tim in particular have you know they they're coaching us. And there's there's a couple of other guys there that are coming along now that are that are, that are fairly new. So so the, you know, the, the where to where to where do you really start? Now, if you've looked at, at, at the control line combat and, and you thought, oh, I wouldn't mind having a go at that. You have, if you've never flown control line before, don't worry. Don't, don't worry too much about it. it it's it is a fair a fair challenge to to learn. But but the, my recommendations are. And I've got I've got them written down. I read what, what I've written. Um, what what you really need is a strong strongish wing wing with a reasonable motor on it. And my personal recommendation is one of Tim Hobbins' flymes um, covered in nylon or diatex and powered powered by a PAW two, a twin ball race one or of about two and a half cc or even the T3 Alberto Para engine. Don't, don't, don't go be tempted to go too, uh, too far down the, the power scale. There's, there's a lot of people will tell you to start off with a, you know, a, a lesser powered engine. But we've tried this. We, me and my son, we initially started learn, trying to learn to fly ourselves. And, and, and we did learn, but we found that the we were better off with a with a more powerful engine. The the um, well, we actually used a K twelve fifteen, and just turn the turn the propeller around, and and get the first few flights in. Um, we there are, there are two two or three different um, ways of learning. Some people will go in the middle, they'll be, have an experienced flyer and, and they, they would tutor the, the, um, the pupil and they would, they would take off and fly and then pass the handle over. We tried it. No, it was, we did, it did not work for us. It ended up in a, it always ended up in a mess. So we, we just fired the engine up, la launched it off uh, and 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 after about after about three or four launches we were flying we were going around yeah okay we didn't keep it in the air for too long but i can after after about another five or six launches we were we were running half a tank out without any difficulty at all um it's that in my view is that that's that's the way to teach people and to learn it, it's there's too much faffing about and messing about um, with but you do need a strong model um, also it helps if you've got um, a, a flying site with fairly soft ground that it, that really that that helps and all the, the last the last couple of summers where we've had rock hard ground you do need you do need to look for, for, for something that's fairly fairly soft so so start with a strong model strong, a strong combat wing with a, a reasonably powered engine it's probably a two and a half cc turn the propeller around get in the middle and just and just have a go if you've got somebody there that, that can teach you to, that can talk you through it get them to have a flight you stand in the middle with them and let them talk you through it and then then just have a go yourself, and I'm sure within the half, well, we we've within half a dozen flights, we were away and on our own flying um, to the point where I actually, um, not sure, I actually we we built a self launcher, and I could I could I was actually flying on my own. We'd go to a pylon race practice session. I'd take the combat wing. Go off out into the to the feet off to one side and, and and put a few flights in. So so yeah. Now the big question is, 
will you get dizzy? Yeah, of course you will. Everybody gets dizzy. The um, the it, there are techniques to get over it, but the more you fly, the the, the less the, the, the less the less you'll get dizzy. We found that focusing on from the on the on something on the outside of the circle, sort of once once a lap. The, just for, look at the guy that, that's just launched your your wing, or look at a tree, or something like that, and just just keep just keep going. Fly, fly, just clock up the laps. Don't worry about doing anything else. Too too more adventurous. Just clock the laps up. Build a bit of immunity up to the to the dizziness. Three or four visits to the flying site, and you'll you'll have got got over the, got o over that that side of it, or a good part of it. Um, so, if you if you can if you've got a club locally, and there are there are people that within the combat association that come from all over, all parts of the UK, contact contact the the um, the the association, and they'll put you in touch with. Uh, with um, somebody, somebody hopefully fairly close, or, or even come along to one of the competitions and, and talk to people. But it's not not impossible to do it on your own. We 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 got a fairly fairly good way with with, with doing it on our own. When, once once I would got over the initial sort of the dizziness, then the next the next stage is to start putting. Um, um some maneuvers in now just start we started off just do a do a loop every do a loop every every, every other circuit and then and then sort of develop you know one once you get you're sort of comfortable with that attempt to do 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 the figure eight which is a you do three three quarters of a loop followed by the bond get keep it high just keep high and keep practicing keep practicing the the the, the loop then the bond and get do, then do a circuit loop and bond get used to that to start with and when, once you've relaxed you you or you've feel like you're getting to grips with that the next maneuver is the combat 8 the combat eight is the maneuver that you really need to to get to grips with and this is where the combat really starts and this is you this is the bunt you fly a circuit you do a bunt and then the loop obviously get plenty of height perhaps put a bit of up in and then for, for, uh, put down fall down and start with full full down in and then a loop then up for the loop and and try and keep and just keep it flowing from bunt to loop bunt to loop but you've got to do the to start with the, the bunt first once you got once you get reasonably um reasonably once you've got that mastered you are actually ready to come and and, and fly fly combat Get in, a, get in a circle with with uh, with with somebody else and and, and try, but it, it's the combat eight is what the whole thing uh, evolve revolves around. Um, being being able to alter the shape of your eights and 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 fine tune in your your maneuvers is, is something that will come, but but once get well, as soon as you've got. The, the bunt and then the loop, the combat eight, you're ready to come and have a go. I, I was I was barely able to do it when the first well, the first year I was still learning to fly combat, but hey, it was good fun and don't think I upset too many people. There might have been one or two, but I didn't not too many. So all right, now Nick move we move on to to the wing design and the building building of the models. Um, Vintage and Oliver combat are all uh, are designs uh, are all from the pre nineteen seventy five sort of catalogue. It um, has to. Um, how did I start? Um, 
the yeah they're all they're all that there's actually there is a list in the in of designs that are of um that uh that you can use for the competition the 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 fly me that that we were talking spoke about just now for the training is um is just is is uh, one of tim's own designs and he's taken the sort of the best bits of of all of um of his models and put them together really to to for people to use as a training for, for training it's not a, a legal um model that you could actually fly in a, in a competition but it is a good strong model for learning to fly and it flies pretty good as well so but the the one the the designs for the competition which obviously is a limited um list of designs um are they're all pre-1975 um they, this um uh, within the, the association the simon miller who who runs a, uh, a printing service and he'll print you the plans off there is the list the full list on the combat association website and there's a list within the um within the bmfa rule, control line rule book have a look at it have a look at the designs and, uh, and search them search out on the internet as well which is what one of the things that I I did from and, and downloaded a few of the um, the free plans that are, that are available online, that which are quite good because you can you can you can look at them and see what methods construction methods that people were using to you know to and, uh, basically learn how to build build models yourself. Um, from from their from their plans now the personally speaking what the best designs to use i find have found that the parallel cord wings like the the, the particularly the squig and, and i'll throw the uh, the liquidator into the into the uh, the mix are extremely stable models, and so long as you keep the the, the centre of gravity for the model fairly well forward, certainly less than 40, 40 mil. Um, 38 is, is great actually. They fly like they, they fly really smooth. They wouldn't do they wouldn't do for a top end um, combat flyer, but they would do they would do fine for for me and any and anybody wanting to come into it so look for the parallel cord cord sort of designs um, there are some ready to fly models from the um, from the ukraine but obviously the, the the problems in the ukraine have put the kibosh a bit on that that one for for now the i have spoken to them recently about it and they said that as soon as they can get um a, a supply of um of decent bolsa they will actually start to produce um produce some more um more of these um ready to fly models and some of them are very good actually that, that yellow piranha behind me is one of the uvenco uvenco models and i've, I've flown a few of them their, their, their models and yeah they're, they're great so it's no there are people there are there are models out there that that um hopefully there will be very soon again models out there for people that don't want to build their own but to be quite honest with you building your own is not a major problem i have a, a, a um, about a 15 mil piece of plywood from b and q a steel a steel meter ruler um and a few little tools that i've the jigs that i've made up and i i'm turning the models out fairly easily the the um as for the covering the tack or the covering of the models tim has actually done some very good tutorial um um videos that can be found on on youtube that um to show you how, how to cover them and 
that's that's they're, they're good enough i that's where most of us have learned how to how to cover cover with with nylon um diatex there's several different types of material to cover with the diatex is personally my my favorite um and there was a there was a little bit of a shortage of them but the company called skycraft now are um i have got it back on up for, on sale on their website and you can buy you you can you 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 can use dope as as a lot of people did in years gone by and dope is really a good thing for 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 finishing the material for, for finishing it off but Tim has um, demonstrated in, in one of his videos, and I've used this method, he used Yuhu glue and thinned with cellulose thinners, brush it onto the onto the framework, and then cut cut your diatex out, put it on with an iron, try and keep it fairly taut, and make sure you don't put any warps or twists in, into, into the frame. Once you've got it on, just with a with a hot air with a with a, with a, I use a paint gun from a from a fair distance, strip a gun from a from a distance, shrink it down, get it a bit not, sort of reasonably tight, and then we um, we used Wilco's um, indoor interior um, varnish, wood varnish, and I've I, I, the mod, models that I started with four years ago some of them are still in existence now i mean i don't i've got well i have flown one of them this year but they they've really stood up stood the test that the wilco's interior wood uh, varnish does work it, it, it does hold hold back the well protects the the, the diatex enough but i've also done used the diatex the um, skycraft dope um the shrinking dope, I think it's the shrinking dope that we used, and that's really good. You get a really taut, strong finish, and that that stands up to the test even better. So, but if you're going to build, have a look at, um, at, at Tim's at Tim's videos. There are there are other ones uh, and, and tutorials within the Combat Association website. The, Links to, to all this work will um, are on the last page of the, this presentation, so you'll be able to have a look at it. Also, that secondhand mod wings. You 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 think well, why how how can there be secondhand wings in combat? But there are. The, some some of the top guys will build build wings, and maybe they're they're a little bit heavier than what they really want them to be. So they they'll sell them off. If you're if you're in the right place at the right time, they're worth they're worth buy, buying one or two of these model wings that have been built by the top guys. They um, you can see then you can see then what how what construction methods they've used and get an idea of how how to improve on your own techniques. Um, Peter, can I just ask a uh, well, there's a question came through from Alexander Malcolm and it. He was saying, where do you, you guys uh, find diesel fuel from now? Ah, I'll come to that. I'll come ah, to that. I've got, right, sorry. I've got to that. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll come to that one in a, in a, in a bit. But um, yeah, so the, the um, yeah, so, so build, build, building the covering the, the models is, oh, the, 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 the second hand thing is actually quite, is quite a good thing just to have a look at what, how other people of um of try to build things and th and see just get ideas this is one of the things that really amazed me about vintage combat pre-1975 pre well you'd think by now wouldn't you that there would only be one route that into the, with this but i tell you now you go to a competition you'll 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 see eight or nine different designs a wing flying there'll be four or five different motors being pull, pulling them around the sky there'll be different models covered with different materials of course you can whether you, this year 
um, uh, film, your solar film type type or your hobby king type film is is now a legal um, covering, so you can use them. But I wouldn't recommend wouldn't recommend it. Not not for for somebody like myself. You you've got you're going to hit the ground once or twice and. Uh, they, you see some of the top guys that have done the the, uh, the film covered models this year, and one or two of them have come unstuck in, in competition with where they've been they've clattered and the uh, they've lost lost a model or lost a competition due due to due to them being a little bit too fragile. Where the nylon covered will will do is the best thing to do. Right, what engines can you use? Um, there is a list within within the within the um, BMFA ham a rule book, and the, the list is also again on, on on the website. Obviously, they're all they're all diesel engines. The the if it's a, a twin ball race motor, you can only run up to uh, three point two cc, or if you've got a plane bearing motor, you can run three and a half. Now, don't don't be put off using a two and a half. A lot of people didn't. There's quite a few people didn't realise, but in the first my first year, I was using a, using a two and a half, the K12 two and a half fifteen, and there wasn't a great deal of difference and in in the speed, or. or it did not put me into a position quite as often where I was out of control, and, and it you can soon get go, get too fast. The, the two and a two and a half ball race motor is is ideal for getting started in vintage combat. Now the the truth of the motor thing. I not heard this so, said so much in the last couple of years, in the last year or so. But when I first turned up, people, it was said that to win in in vintage combat, you need to buy a Rothwell, the Australian combat motor, which is no longer available. This is not true. The, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful engine. It's fine. It's got a lot of a lot of grunt to that motor. The, now the the K the K the well the T four um, is that basically a copy of it, but with dif with different materials, and it is that's an absolutely superb engine. And I would I'd suggest that this year the majority of competitions or that would have the uh, the top. The top score rate in, in, in this year, the T, the the Para T4, the the K12 is a good motor. The PAW is a good motor. So they're all good motors. They really they really are. Um, now, where do you get an engine from? The, well, some one of the issues. This is now an issue because a lot of them were, were manufactured in in the Ukraine. Uh, um, there are some uh, uh, new T3s, so the two and a half, uh, that the para, para has got, and there are um, the K12. There will be some fairly soon. By by, it's being worked on, shall we say that? So, but the PAW, you can ring him up, and they'll he'll send you supply you an engine. But I definitely recommend stick with the twin ball race motors. That um, as we'll, we'll come on to it in a minute with the fuel, it's it, it's it's better all round really. Um, how to run it in? Basically, follow the follow the um, the manufacturer's instructions. Stick stick to that. But you re run in. I some people just stick the motor in a model and, fl and, and run three or four tank falls through it and put it in the air. Well, I'd suggest it needs more. Strap it, if if you're new to, to diesel engines, stick it on a bench and probably run best part of a litre of fuel through. In, in, in three or four minute steps, just keep, just run, three or four minutes, get, or fire it up, 
get get it set it back back the compression off keep it nice and rich don't let it get hot or um, and just just run the best part of a liter of fuel through adjust it slow and and, um, and learn how to set it that's that's before you put it into a model once you've got it in in the, in the model keep it backed off get a few flights in and then slowly start winding the compression on a little bit but don't let don't let the oil deposits on on the wing to turn black if you've got if turn black you've gone too far looking after the engine my i just just there'll be 101 different opinions on this but my view is to, to run the, the model out of and the tank and the engine out of fuel clean it clean the clean the engine down and then what i i do is i use uh, three and one um three three and one with ptfe this, this this sort of oil i spray the engine with that inside and, and out and, and seal it in a bag and, and put it away it's fine the, the engines are coming out of the bags they're not gone dark the the first time you go to start then they start fairly quick and away they go go I've not had a problem with it another problem product that I'm using is is the the inner tech um, power clean this is a great a great um, here we go, a great uh, cleaner it, it, to, if you sprayed an engine with brake cleaner you would you you you'd do some damage to the casings and stuff that does no damage other than clean the, the engine and my, my engines are looking like like new and some of them are like f uh, four years old now they're doing they're doing all right on so also on the subject of um, of the engines venturi silicon tube let's just see um as you can see on here there's a um there's uh, some of the engines that we're talking about, the the the, K, the K12, the the Rothwell, the PAW, and the T4, all, all, all with with a with a, with a with a with a with a tube on. So that if if you hit the ground, if you come onto into the ground, the the tube will bend and it will shut off and stop any any muck from getting into the engine. Hopefully, now as you can see on there, there's another engine. The, the Fora, the Fora J, that's a two and a half engine. It's a little bit more. It's a more. It's a modern engine with an ABC piston aligner. You know that is also allowed into in into the vintage competition because the performance is fairly similar to the other engines that are being used. Tim Tim um, is with us tonight. He uh, he's had a bit of success with this and actually won a few uh, won, certainly won one competition that I've seen, maybe more. And it, that's a it's a good engine, really good engine. That and you you can you can be fairly rough with that that one. So but get the tube on on the uh, on the uh, on the venturi to keep to help try and keep the muck out right fuel as we were just talking about there's the pros and cons of ready-made fuel it's getting more and more difficult to buy ready-made fuel i think there are there is still a few model shops that have got ready-made fuel leeds model shop i know definitely has but i would say mix your own it's Leeds model shop was which is where we always turn to because we're, we're fairly local have got ether which is one of the one of the ingredients that you need um, the the um, yeah the, so it, it paraffin it, the fuel is made up of, of uh, paraffin um, the ether, ether paraffin would be around about 50 percent maybe a little bit less your your um your ether around around about about 30 percent maybe maybe a bit more and that and then your the, the rest of it's really made up with oil with the oil now there's there's a, there's 101 different 
uh, opinions on on the oil. Um, some some of the guys are actually running first press in caster. Now, as Barry will tell you, it's not it's 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 a very good at protecting the engine. Maybe a bit too much at protecting the engine because it's very very difficult to to clean out and. I was quite happy not to be using it, using proper caster anymore. With uh, now that I've gone over to using using these engines, and I use um, a, a semi-synthetic um, oil called Maxima 927. And to be honest with you, the engines are like the spotless inside. I have had a couple of failures, engine failures, but. That were one with the big end, but it, that was nothing to do with the oil. That was some uh, process in the manufacturing. But Maxima 927, look at it and, and, and draw your own. Find something similar to that. That's all I'm saying. Um, and keep it simple. Then the, we also, um, you need a bit of an ignition enhancer. A um, it's a what do they, what's it called the it, it's a an additive booster to uh, e, ehn um, if you google if you if you um, go on ebay and put put that in you'll 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 have two or three different uh, alternatives come up pick one and, and try it the but you only need about two mil Two mil of it in on top of on top of your your the mix that you've got. Now put too much in, it doesn't work. Put don't put enough in, that definitely doesn't it doesn't work. So just stick to two mil and you'll be fine. Um, Peter, yeah, we've got a couple of questions that have built up behind the scenes. One of them is uh, actually it was from a guy called Michael. What actually is the, how do you go about the combat bout, basically, was what he was asking. He said, what's the, what's right. the point or something like that. So could you very briefly uh, tell us how the, how, the, how the bout takes place and, and roughly what the scoring system right. is? Right, okay. The, right, the, obviously there's, there's two, two pilots and the, um, each pilot has... Uh, has two pit crew. The the you'll get um, let's get the you get you'll get you you get at the beginning before the competition starts the all the entries are drawn. And in fact, Tim Tim's been doing it. Done some great uh, videos of, of his draws. So you get draw. You turn up on the day. You will go. You Preferably get there about an hour hour beforehand. Put a put a, a couple of flights in. Get your engine engine set. If you've got a pit crew with you, all well and good. If you're not, have a chat around. There'll be I'm sure there'll be two people that will that will come and, and pit for you. When your time comes, you go to the circle. You get into uh, you, you go to, into the center of the circle. Your pit crew are on the outer circle. You uh, uh, and you you will the the center jerk marshal will come. He will pull test your your installation, your bell crank, your lines, and and your handle. It will all be pulled as one lump just to make sure that, that nothing's gonna that it's all gonna stay together. Then the um, you you'll you'll you have oh sorry I'm gonna go back next one sleep the um you'll have about you'll have thir thir a thirty second warm up that you'll be given a streamer at the, at the same time to attach to your model um preferably have a hook on the on the on the pod and and tie tie your streamer on then the, you'll get thirty seconds warm up time and then launch. As soon as you launch, because you, you'll be stood outside the center circle, the, the plane, the, 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 your pit crew will launch the model. You move yourself into, into the center circle and you don't leave the center circle again 
um, unless you, unless you've you've crashed or you've you've got to you've written from some other reason. As long while your model's in the air, do not leave the centre circle. You fly around the centre circle. You do two or three laps until the centre marshal is is happy that, of, that you're flying straight and level, and then he will call combat on. Once it's called combat on, you you basically go looking or your your opponent will come looking for your streamer and when he does you go into your into your combat eight and 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 maneuver around the sky extending your eights do do multiple loops multiple bunts and basically try and get onto the tail of, of your opponent or your opponent will be trying to get onto the yours and just take a little bit of your streamer Chopping the whole thing off is not a great idea. Just learning to, to, to do that. And do you get points, Peter, for how much you're, you're cutting off? You know, do each each cut, do you get points? Yeah, yeah, you, you um, get five, five points, isn't it, John? Four. Four, four, yes. Four sorry. for a cut. <laughs> yeah, four, four, four for a cut. <laughs> Now, if so, so yeah, every cut you get, you get, you're getting four points, and then if you, uh, if you, if you have, if you, if you end up on the ground, or all your your ground time, every 15 seconds you get a penalty point. So a minute on the ground, you, you is basically worth a cut. So really, you've got to try and try and stay in the air, and uh, as as best you can and um, that, that's yeah uh, for four and a half minutes the combat is, is on once once the that four minutes that is finished they call you know the call will be called to told that it's finished and um, basically mo most of the time i'm just about to run out of fuel if, if or, or i've run out of fuel just before the, that time anyway and you, you come down clear the circle and get yourself ready for the next one so and who judges the cuts is it the center marshal no no there's two Some guys outside yeah two two guys outside then they will be sat there with stopwatches to time your to time your ground time and to to, to count the cuts okay there's a question there's another question for um actually it was from michael again uh, and I think Tim's going to answer this one live, which is about yeah. diesel versus glows. Why why not glow motors? Diesel are such old hat right. engines. Tim, oh, are you well, going to pick that one up? Yeah, I'll settle. I, I wasn't I wasn't going to open it live. I answer it live. I just clicked on the wrong button. So. Yeah, no worry, no <laughs> worry. Uh, but I mean, basically, we use diesels because we always have. Um, if you think back to the 60s and the late 50s and into the 70s, the golden age of vintage combat was centered around the Oliver Tiger engine. And vintage combat really is dominated by um, that, that sort of nostalgia thing. And it's just the way we've gone. If you go to America or to Russia or to the Ukraine or France or anywhere else where, the, uh, where there's a big combat um, population, they will use they will use more modern equipment. They'll use um, glow motors, but we don't. We we use diesels, and we and we always have, and that has a lot of benefits really because in a four minute bow, you, you don't need any equipment to start your diesel. You start it by by flicking it, and away you go. We use unbreakable props really. We have nylon propellers, so when you hit the ground, all your pit crew does, crew does pick your model up, flick it, and start it, and you're back in the air again. With a with a with a glow motor, it's more complicated. So what we do, we have a simple a simple uh, class whereby we have one model per bow, one engine per bow, and you try to keep the thing in the air for four minutes, and it just works with diesels. And the diesels that that Peter's been talking about are modern versions of the old Oliver Tiger, pretty much, and and they do work well. They are reliable, and it's it it. It's shown because of the popularity of the class. Um, I do apologise if a lot of people couldn't see my answers that I've been busy typing away, but I'm a bit new to this Zoom thing, so uh, yeah. I'll try and remedy that later. Peter, oh, Tim. 
Tim, oh. my junior Satan with a TD15 then. I'm not welcome, am I? Say that again. <laughs> no. my, junior, my junior Satan with a TD15. <laughs> I'm not welcome. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Depends how lucky you've Peter, Peter, can you... Peter, can you remind me what what happens when um, somebody takes out another model? Because I've I've forgotten. Nothing. Nothing. No. Part of the game. Part of the game. So that's it. You take the other model out and you win. Well, it depends that if you're a, a contact sport. How many um, points you've accumulated, and if you've got enough points to carry through. Because while you're on the ground, um, you're actually counting penalty points. You know, every fifteen seconds you're on the ground. So if you've got enough points, yeah, you win. You can Smash the other model, but it's just part of the game. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I, I just there was there's um, there's uh, I'll try and speed it up a bit because we're moving in short of time now, aren't we? So yeah. I'll um, there's there's um, several there's several different types types of tank there. They all basically the the bent tube in in them go will go from, as you can see at the top there through to the to the right hand side of the tank fairly close to where the pickup point is some of as you can see some of them there are a front there have got a front feed that the, the fuel will be picked up from here but some of these two will be picked up at the back um i prefer i've tried that tried these yeah okay they do they work but i'm not not entirely happy these type of tanks are good. Um, Tim Tim's um, made, made the uh, snuff tanks work pretty good as well. So, but these I prefer these rear tanks because they're great with, with us if you're using a self launcher. Um, with the self launcher, you don't you don't have any problems with the, with, the, with losing the fuel pick, feed to the engine. Um, right, the ha handles and lines. What all I say about handles is try several different types to find one that that suits you i there, there are three handles that i've tried and i've ended up through with the help of, of john leggett and, and a model that i couldn't that i couldn't fly or wing that i couldn't fly one day i ended up produce making the orange uh, handle and i've really sort of stuck to that but a lot of people would would frown on that, but uh, it works for me. Now the lines the, the, that we use, there's um, at the bottom there is a, a Ukrainian set of um, ready-made lines. They're they're a good they're good lines, and I use them quite a lot. But you can there's two two there's some steel lines on the left hand side there, and then the stainless steel. Um, obviously, a stainless steel ones don't rust. Um, but they will, they will work hard, and and they will they will become brittle. And I have seen seen a few mo models have line failures in the pull tests. So yeah, okay, that works, but you have to be careful. But with the steel lines, you also, you have to be careful as well that you don't allow rust to get into them. Uh, um, the the lead outs and line ends. There's several different me methods of. Oh, um, of, of this on the right hand side we have um, the crimp there's a the belt there's the belt crank end now this this line here that is um, it's a fishing fishing um, trace about an 80 an 80 pound fishing line I've used that it's been been fine a lot of people will be using that I do I do put a drop a little drop of sign or something in in the in the crimp to help help hold it all together but i'm never i've never had one of them 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 fail they do sometimes slip but but it, it just jam it jammed the, the line the crimp against the, the the bell crank i've never actually had one pull out now if you look at the the, the middle picture this these are, are very much the 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 ready-made models will come with this and it's a steel wire a lead out wire that can be soldered and this this is well, it's actually my preferred method now and and uh, that's that's actually mig wire in in the bell crank which you know which i bind with with five amp fuse wire and solder never had one fail one of them fail yet 
But uh, to start with, for anybody that's wanting to come and uh, to, to start that starting out, just you just crimp it. If you can, if you buy one of these fishing um, fishing the lead out wires, it, it it comes with some crimps, but generally the, them crimps that it comes with are too big. Right, just buy some tubing, uh, some brass tube, and and make your own. That's uh, that's that would be my that's my advice on that. But the more you do it, the more you um, you um, the better you, the better you get. Quite frankly, and then you do you, you soon you soon learn. Um, a few extras that that, that I've got in, in the box that um, that help the job along a bit quite well, a lot. It is um, I've got an electric screwdriver with a with an Allen key attachment. Great for getting engines on and off quick. Um, yeah, I, I, I use it. I use it a lot. I use it in the work, even in the workshop. I put the engine on. The torque on the electric screwdrivers just seems to be just the right tension as well for for tightening the the the, the bolts down. The next thing is on the list is the the luggage spring balance. Just a cheap luggage spring balance. Test you for test pull your models as you're building them um, before you before you cover them pull pull test the lead outs make sure you're not going to have um, any failures and whenever you go flying then pull test 12 12 and a half kilos is what what you'll get at a competition pulled to a competition so start in the workshop with with, with that one um, a syringe now I, I have i have a syringe which is great for, for um, one of these uh, metal type syringes it's great for 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 if you've got if you think you've got a bit of muck or something in the needle valve or you want to um you know flush something through it's great um, not great for, for pressure testing tanks because it, it produces too much pressure just do that do that with your mouth a bit of fuel tubing on a tank block one one the one side off and then blow in in through the other side great way of testing testing tanks before you install them um, kite line real real winders um, again can be bought on eBay um, fairly fairly cheap brilliant for, for packing up and getting set up quickly because one of the things you do in combat with combat flying is you fly a lot and when you turn up at the flying site you're out if you ain't got your flipping model in the air in 10 minutes you, you, you frowned upon so get, you need get get out there and get 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 stuck in a kite wine is good for that ground sheet and peg it was some pegs also worthwhile taking um keeps everything keeps everything dry or, or and if it rains you can always cover it over um self-launcher definitely build one get build, build yourself a self-launcher there's there's several designs on the um on the internet and on the um well certainly on uh, on the facebook group the combat association facebook group the several little videos have been put on there of different different types um always keep keep a spare set of lines with you you wouldn't be it would be terrible if you went went to the flying site and and you found a problem with your with your with the with it with a set of lines but right my this is uh, my self launcher pretty simple thing um two bits of plywood a hinge here and there's three metal spikes that stick into the ground i have two holes at the back which i put pegs in in to, to support it at the back but to be quite honest with you i don't i haven't used the pegs for the last couple of years um right you can see in me in me the pit box i mean i do have a taco but i don't know why because i've never used it um uh, i have a, a stopwatch which is handy if you want to get a rough idea of what speed you're doing the like the pull tester the kite reel some spare props and um the this um paint cleaner stuff what was it um, sugar soap yeah the sugar soap great for cleaning your models down Get, it gets the oily film film off and it, and yeah it does it does a really good job um we've got a box there uh, a part, some little uh, drawer units with bits and pieces in 
and, and my spare lines. So pretty pretty much uh, just uh, very rarely do I ever really end up end up uh, end up with uh, um, having a problem that that stops me from flying. In fact, that it's, it's never happened. So yeah. Um, what, well, we, we covered really what what to expect. Turn up about an hour before. Try and get a, a test flight in. Get talking to people. Some some there'll be plenty of people who he, will help you. It is really the the whole crew that doing it. And there's 40, 40 odd com, uh, competitors at some of these events, and they've all been really helpful and supportive. Even when you're flipping flying like a, a complete and utter plonker that they they won't they won't they'll give you have a bit of sport with you but you know it's generally good, good it's good and well uh, well mannered and they will help you what what should you wear well think about the ground get make sure you've got the correct footwear wet, wet grass could be fairly slippery with with trainers on put a pair of boots on if the ground's rock hard put your put your trainers on but also make sure you, you keep of um, um, something warm because sometimes we, we've been fl out flying on, on you know what would appear to be a nice day and it can turn pretty flipping rough take plenty of plenty of alternative kit with you um, pit box you, I just you see just see my pit box there um, your, your first bout the, the your competitor that you're flying with will help you and the centre marshal will help you. They'll talk to you and give you give you advice. Now the next book bit, developing your skills. Well, that's really once you get once you've got over the first few few first bout the first first competition, start looking to develop your skills. And really, I recommend trying to get in with one of the one of the existing teams. And they'll help you really to develop your skills, moving you on from the, the combat eight um, to to extending the, the eights and, and all the other little tricks. Because there's a lot of tricks, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on in in uh, in, in combat that you, that you would not that you don't notice to start with, and it does it takes time to pick it all up. Top. Top team, we'll get in with one of the teams. They will really, really help. Uh, um, okay, so it's just going on to the information. Um, have we got any? Hey, hey, before we get to that one, could you go right back to the start of your presentation where I think it's Richard Stitson and someone else is, is flying and just talk to us about the crash hats and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, sorry. Asked. I've been Sorry, asked a couple of times. Yeah, is it Stitson? Was... Richard Stitson in that in the green shirt. Yeah, that. So. Yeah, with the models. Yeah, the the um the obviously yeah in, in stuff to wear you need you need a you need a crash hat. Um, doesn't have to be anything particularly expensive. A builder's hat isn't isn't really suitable. You want you want something without a peak on it as well, because it a block it a block your view. Um, there's, there's also the, the there's another thing issue there that I, I've missed out on on the is the the wrist strap that is compulsory. Make sure it is good. Um, even even when you're going out for, for practice flying, if you're going down the local local field, where put a wrist strap on. I, I've seen I have seen a combat wing fly fly off and and. They, they do fly for quite some distance. So, I mean, certainly, certainly the the, the uh, pressurized tank systems will, will model will, will just keep on going till it runs out. I'm not sure whether whether a vintage model would would Tim would would does, would a vintage model go far without? Can't in the right orientation. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it depends where the fuel is, but. What you've got to remember is that we've increased the thickness of the wires now, and um, you know so that the, the incidents the only flyaways now over the last seven seven eight years is completely eliminated. So. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty safe. 
Yeah. Oh, it, it's it, it is. It's it's it, it's an amazing it's an amazing amazing sport. It, it, it's when you, you first watch it, you go. Well, I mean, I I've been watching for for a long time. When on a Sunday afternoon, when when the pylon racing has finished, I, I've always wandered over to the to the combat circle and tried to work out what the hell's going on, really. But with the with the, and with the idea of of having a go, you know, having a go myself. Well, four years ago, I thought I bet if I bet if I'm going to do it, I better do it now. And uh, as much as I love pylon racing, I've been I'm pretty much enjoying this as well. It's uh, it, it's uh, it's one hell of a hell of a challenge. The um, just just to get the 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 equipment working just that little bit better than than average and but it's your flying skills the the top the top guys in, in the top 10 in in the UK the combat flyers are extremely good really really good uh, most of them have been doing it for quite a while but you've got Tim's lad Sam is uh, is, is one of the top guys and he's is in 20s late 20s i think and uh, but they they've they've all had a certain amount of training and uh, and, and a lot of experience but um you when if you come you come up about against uh, richard herbert and, and people like that they just play with you they they'll, they'll just sit on your tail and they'll fly they'll follow you around the sky and when they're ready they'll come and uh, nibble a little bit off your streamer and you won't you, you you'll occasionally you'll you'll do a maneuver that catches them out and you'll you'll end you'll see their streamer and so you have a lunge at it but it's very rare that you'll ever that you ever really get it i've i've got i've i've, I've picked up two or three cuts off of, off of good guys, but, but only by catching them out, out of uh, out of uh, out of uh, catching them off guard, shall we say? The, the, the problem is, is it just annoys them, and they come back and they take two off of you. So yeah, it's good fun, enjoying it every, every minute of it. Peter, um, could you um, have you got a model there that you could just just show on the screen? Yeah. Well, uh, there's been a few people asking about building and the, a the actual right. uh, models. This pick a typical, this, typical yeah, this, one. Do you, Pete? Do you still, help. Peter? Do you still um, have stuff in the presentation to do? Because if you if you cancel your presentation, your image will go full screen then, which will be oh, better. Right. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll do that because no, I, yeah, I have, I have, I've, I've skimmed. I've but you skimmed. can go back to it. Yeah. Um, stop share. Is that why I click on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, we've got the this Andrew. Both, sort of, it's all obviously it's all um, building techniques and materials that would have been used at, at the time in the in in the nineteen seventies. There's nothing in there that's um, that you know. There's no co carbon fiber. You can you I mean you can use glass fiber. Obviously the tanks are, some of the tanks are made out of glass fiber. Um, uh, that's hold, a, it up a, hold it up a little bit, Pete. Yeah, sorry, that's a modern day plastic, plastic commercial um, elevator horn on it, and it'll be um, a, um, a plastic commercial select. I think that's a, a select um, bell crank, a, bo a bicycle spoke. Yeah. On there. What engine have you got in that one, Peter? That's that's um, a K12. The yeah. K twelve fifteen in this. This is for the for the Oliver the model that I've got for the Oliver Combat. Now, this this what this model actually has flown every Oliver Combat meet meeting that I've done. So I mean you, you see it's got a patch on there where where the bit of a coming together, but but apart from that it's still all all there and intact. You'll have to you'll have to lend that one to me, Peter, when I come to a combat meeting. Of course. That'll be the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on a major, major building project this this year over the winter, and I'm going to build build myself 
a decent stock. That that model does that have like a pretty well a solid leading edge? Is that yeah. almost like a solid like a dominator or a warlord? It's it is it is a um, half inch square uh, half inch square bolster down here with quarter inch strip on top and the bottom. Yeah. And then, then the and then it's got a, a, a spruce, so a spruce um, spar quarter, quarter by an eighth. Yeah. Along along the back, and then the the ribs slot in. Um, that'll, that that'll do for me, Pete. That'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. T t t t Tim's got a laser car. He cut he cut the ribs out on this, but I have made. Okay, what about one of those other ones, the yellow one? What's the story on that one? That's, um, this one here is a Ukrainian uh, Yuvenko. This was a model I bought second hand. It was unflow. Um, this was this was the actual model that I couldn't fly. And, and that converted me over to using that the, the orange handle, which John John has a, a handle very similar to it. And one day we I, we were struggle, I was struggling to fly fly this, and John said, "I'll oh, just try it with my handle." And and, and it and, it, and, and, and is that model it. is that model vintage legal? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a piranha. Piranha, it's, yeah, I remember the name. Yeah, uh, the the um. Yeah. Some people say the Piranha is the best design of the lot. It doesn't really matter to me at the moment. It, <laughs> my, my skills level is not good enough to, to worry about that. I, I'm just trying to keep the model in the air all the time. There is one other little um, thing that I'll, I'll throw in the hat while we're at it. This. It's, um, it's an F2E model, which you can buy from the Ukraine. Comes already built. You just fit, you, you, you fit, put the push rod in, clamp it up, bolt your engine on. And this one's the, the, the 4J. And these models fly extremely nicely. Obviously not vintage combat legal, but are great for, for, for learning to fly. Learn, they, they go. They, they travel around the sky beautifully, yeah. so yeah. it's good for another another tool for um, do, sorting your skills out, really. So, yeah. It, is there anything that you wanted to talk about about the suppliers right at the end? I think you had something on your presentation about yeah. suppliers. Well, the the I mean engine suppliers. There's uh, Mark Greenwood. I don't know whether he's with us. No, I don't think so. I haven't seen his name. Uh, I'll have yeah. a quick look. Yeah, he um, he has actually um, he has had a little sm a small stock of these in. Oh no, Mark is with us. Yeah, Mark is with us. Yeah, he um, uh, his his contact details are on the bottom of that presentation, and then he he he's got a small had a small stock of these. Hopefully he'll be getting some. I think he's still got one or two still left, but he's still. Um, he, hopefully we'll be. It sounds like we will be able to get some more of these in the fair, you know, in the near future. So we're just there's um, some negotiations going on. Uh, uh, hopefully, sort of fairly soon to get the um, get the K, some more K12s made. But PAW, British British yeah. company. Support them. Um, they they, they yeah, do a good, great motor. Good guy. Yeah. Really yeah. like him, Tony. Yeah. So so yeah, it's great. A great motor. I've I've used um, used the PAWs. I I prefer the K12 because very. It's a bit like it's a bit like our pylon race motors. The, you know the materials and everything that are in it feel feel the same. Where the PAW um, it, it feels feels a bit different to me. So, but they they're all they're all good motors. All of their motors that were listed earlier, yeah. I've not had, not had a problem with them. So, and I've tried them all, tried them all. So, yeah. So, have you got anything you want to add, John? Uh, no, you pretty well covered everything. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. John, Just on, on for beginners, like you've got to detune the plane because there are two uh, the, the two manoeuvrable. You, you move the weight a bit forward, but that's about the only thing. But like you say, it need you need a combat wing and a two and a half. Using smaller engines are very difficult. Phantom mics and things like that are very hard to fly. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first control line model. Yeah, same mic. here, same here. Frog AG. <laughs> Peter, you've, you've hardly taken a breath for the last hour and 10 minutes, and that's been wonderful. And I, I have to say that the, the comments that have, have been in the chat box, there's an awful lot of thanks going out there, and you've covered mm. a huge amount. What I would ask is obviously um, any information, you know, links and that. If you want to ping him across to Andy in, a, in an email or anything like that, then he'll he'll put that on the in the Air Tonight website as well. Okay. Um, yeah. We've got links to your to, to the other websites and various things as well, but we'll get them all on there because there's a, it's quite a large audience out there, and you know it should it should help an awful lot. Yeah. Oh, um, that, thank yeah, thank you everybody for coming and having a look, and I hope that we can uh, that we can see one or two of you. Please don't be afraid afraid to turn up. Uh, a competition with with a with a with a with a model and a set of lines and come come and come and, uh, and, and get some help. models you mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. normally but normally by sort of mid after or, uh, early afternoon there's quite a few of us that are out of the competition that would be that are prepared to help so they'll help you <laughs> But, it was uh, a question, a quite good question, actually, which we just missed. It was someone asked, how many engines do you need if you're going to be competing? I think he might have thought the engines were a bit vulnerable, which I don't think they really are. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just, I, I've, I'm not going to show you or tell you, because my wife might be able to hear the other side, that I've got quite a few engines. Don't, don't do it, Peter. Don't do it. <laughs> no, but to be honest with you, I have I've only used three engines in the last two years. <laughs> and, and one of them I broke the crankshaft on earlier this year. So so th th there are new engines sat there that haven't been run, but they're gonna have to get runs at some point, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah. We've got a little upstart called Joe Harvey. He's asked, oh. where are the events advertised? On the, the CFA site. Yeah. Pardon, John? On, on the CFA site, Combat Flyers Association, you, you okay. go to their site, they have a calendar. Yeah. And do you put them in the uh, BMFA contest calendar as well? I'm sure you yeah. do. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Okay, and, and and obviously, if, if anybody is interest, interested, get and you get onto the Facebook, or if you're not already on the Facebook group, get on the Facebook group. There's a great community on there, and they will have have any advice that you need. They'll offer you advice. And the uh, yeah, I'll see. Den, Dennis has just posted yeah, up the, the link. Good old Nosha. A great place yeah. for advice. Yeah. No, you've got a good you've got a great following out there i know that and um having having member of the uh, member of the peter model flying club of course so we've had we've had uh world world champion members and and everything in the team in the club there so we we used to watch all the time but uh yeah a bit scary if you gave me the handle so um yeah i tend to <laughs> i would tend to keep away from it it's, uh, but yeah i think i think a bit like you know Barry's and a couple of talks in the past you know, and, and a bit like the pylon racing, you I, we find it with all the disciplines, really, everybody's willing to help and encourage everybody to try it. So, yeah. you know, just get down to the field, like you say, and, um, you know, everybody's sort of opened arm, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. Fabulous. Well, guys, I don't think, is there any more questions there, Barry? You, there's three no, more. I think, we've, I think we've batted them off. Um, Tim done a great job of, um answering those let's just have a quick look oh there has been a couple more come up no no rider we answered that Tim uh no I think we're all Comments. we're all done on the questions yeah and thank you yeah. Tim, Tim for lots of lots of thanks from everybody um, um 
yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you, Tim and John, as well, for coming on with me tonight because no I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. And you're more than welcome in the future to uh, to put together another presentation, of course. You know, if, if somebody wants something a little bit more detailed or more focused, you know, that, that may well work. But, you know, have a, have a chat with the community and see what they what they fancy. What, what I would su suggest to you guys is um, you can use the BMFA's Zoom account like at Christmas. I've, I've done that a couple of times um, for pylon racing and control line speed. You could have a little Christmas chat. Um, and I think you, you could have a lot of fun as well. Um, I know the combat flyers are a, a, good, a good bunch. Um, and, you know, that might be a nice thing for you to do. And, and hopefully we might see some of you next next uh, Saturday evening. I don't know if anybody's turning up to the presentation. I'll be there, Mark. <laughs> it's normally a, normally a rowdy table <laughs> of, uh, of combat flyers, which uh, <laughs> always is amusing. So, so I, don't, I don't take on board this fitness thing that you started off with, because I I'll, thought every, every combat flyer had a can of beer in the hand. But, like, you know. I'll just tell you a little thing, Mark. I flew an F2A model for the first time a few weeks ago, no, maybe six, six or eight weeks ago. It was the most traumatic physical experience I have ever had. I am not kidding you. I, am, I, I do not joke at all. You know, in my 60, odd, 60 years, I have never been taken so close to the edge physically as flying that F2A model. I was just smash to pieces I was um, so yeah. that that adds the athletic part when when people say how can model fly and be a sport well I, I've start I, I've had to start training Mark I'll tell you seriously fantastic yeah I, I was I was there I saw it oh yeah I was I was destroyed wasn't I Peter oh god it was unbelievable I couldn't yeah, yeah. It, it, them them guys that do it week in week out uh, 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 yeah. something else yeah yeah definitely but i just didn't think it, it, it yeah the, the, the okay. top guys in, in the combat are, 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 are the same same sort of caliber but obviously not that fitness are they there's something there's something yeah. with that what you would what you did that day yeah it was pretty pretty amazing Tra yeah. traumatic peter yeah. was the word you're looking for <laughs> brilliant okay yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah, John, John, Tim, Peter, absolutely brilliant. Really enjoyed that. Um, just for anybody out there, anybody who's a free flighter, uh, there is a talk next week on BMK timers, I believe. Chris Edge um, from Scotland. Oh, he lives in Scotland anyway, and he, he keeps lots of chickens. He's coming down to talk to coming <laughs> coming down to talk to us all about um, some electronic timers that are made in the UK. So um, that should be uh, quite an interesting session. Thank you guys again. I'm going to stop the recording and um, if hopefully it won't bin everybody at the same time.